was always told that I was young and never in my mind, even though I was having chest pains to say that I had issues with my heart. But now we know that heart disease can happen at any age. I think because you can't see it, uh, it's not talked about a lot. There should be more organizations built on prevention and advocacy, you know, going into these communities, talking to people. Legislation needs to be involved. You know, public policy is so important. Uh, we need to make sure that everyone is held accountable when it comes to our health. The reality is that we all know someone who's gone through the same thing. Cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of death and disability in the world. Shockingly, 80% of premature heart disease and strokes are preventable. I wanna talk about and get people talking about cardiovascular disease. So in this episode, I'm talking to Professor Rifat Atum, and he's going to talk to us about transforming healthcare systems. Professor Atum, wonderful for you to be here today. Thank you for the opportunity to contribute to this episode. Cardiovascular disease affects everyone and is number one killer in, in, in many countries around the world. It has also affected me because very recently, a very close friend died um, from uh, a, a, an unexpected cardiac event. Also, my late father passed away from cardiovascular disease that was preventable. The healthcare system is really struggling to manage cardiovascular disease. Why do you think that is? Well, a number of reasons for that. The first, I think we've become complacent. The policymakers need to really act on this major problem as they've done for other conditions. Secondly, the transition in terms of the epidemiology, the disease patterns in countries have changed very quickly, but health systems have not transitioned at the same speed. Health systems are designed to manage problems of the past rather than problems of today and the future. Doing more of the same is clearly not solving the problem given the number of deaths. So what do you find most frustrating in all of this? I think what's frustrating is that many of the interventions exist, diagnostics, Prevention interventions, treatment interventions exist. We have very sophisticated data systems. We have analytic capability. Yet, much of these innovations or interventions are not applied. And even when they're applied, they're not scaled up rapidly enough. So we're losing unnecessarily millions of individuals each year by, by not applying what we currently have. There isn't an understanding that actually investing in, in cardio health, cardiovascular health, is investment in the economy. It's not just a good investment, it's one of the best investments one can make. The cost of cardiovascular disease uh, to our economies is, is, is a trillion dollars or more each year. Just in the US is $400 billion. Uh, in the UK, around uh, $30 billion. In Japan, around $100 billion. Uh, so the question is why are we not addressing this major problem um, appropriately? So I think more effort needs to go into uh, collecting data and doing good studies to show the economic cost of cardiovascular disease. But very importantly, what are the benefits of investing in prevention of cardiovascular disease? We should understand and identify individuals who are at risk of developing certain conditions. So we need to understand these um, factors that influence disease uh, progression. Professor Tum, do we have reason to be optimistic? There's a renaissance in science. We have highly effective diagnostics, highly effective and cost-effective treatments, very well-established uh, public health programs. We've not been able to put these together, but once we invest in health systems to make them work and bring these interventions to, to scale, as we've done with HIV, we'll be able to uh, diagnose early enough, we'll be able to treat individuals and prevent unnecessary death. And this complacency has gone on for too long. So we need to act now, act decisively, act at scale. We need more people like you who are, who are standing up and saying, we need to make a change in how we treat cardiovascular disease, and more importantly, in how we prevent cardiovascular disease. 
Well, it's kind of like that, that, that saying that it takes a village to raise a child. I think it, it takes the same thing in the healthcare system. You need pharmaceutical companies, you need patients, you need doctors, and you need everybody to work collectively. You need legislators to find out the, the root causes of issues relating to heart disease. Thank you, Shanta Collette. To prevent any more of these devastating stories from happening, we all need to work together. And as Professor Atum so brilliantly said, act now, act decisively, and act at scale.